this event, at the core of this event lies the fundamental belief that in today's world of complex challenges, cross-sectoral collaboration is critical for the social innovation ecosystem to flourish. This is why you're all here representing various sectors, academia, philanthropy, private sector, NGOs, social entrepreneurs, you name it. You all have different perspectives on challenges at hand. Digilog is a transmedia arts and technology platform which draws its force from the creative industries. It operates and conveys its messages via exhibitions, performances, conferences, and a series of education events with a die-hard focus on exploring new developments in technology, its impacts, and its internalization by society. Since we're all here to explore the realm of social innovation from different lenses, we'd like to disrupt the general flow of your day and contribute to this event with a short film by David O'Reilly titled Everything. Before we watch this film, I want to quickly give you some information on why we value this work and how it resonated with us to include it in the program. David O'Reilly is an incredibly talented animator who won all the possible awards he could have won by the age of 25 and slowly moved on to making even more conceptual works. So what we're actually going to watch is the trailer of his latest PlayStation video game. O'Reilly worked five years with the Alan Watts Foundation in order to integrate Alan Watts' philosophical writings into the thought structure of the game. For those who may not know, Alan Watts is a British philosopher famous for translating Eastern philosophies, Zen Buddhism to be specific, into the Western cultures. What's really interesting about this game is that it's the first game ever to allow its players to become everything they see. With limitless avatar options, from dolphins to insects, galaxies to continents, and even inanimate objects, the player can embody different points of view as well as being able to control its magnitude. So this role playing becomes a powerful tool for gaining insight on the interconnectedness of nature, tackling existential questions where gaming shifts into guided meditation and a practice of perception. Utilizing video games as an art medium, O'Reilly continually probes gray areas in between what it means to play, while agitating the core of popular video games functions based on competition, success, and reward. And this is the first video game ever to be shortlisted for Oscar nominations in the short films category. The idea of an artist acting like a virus in the system which promotes consumerist products fueled by violence and a need to conquer, utilizing the same medium for an incredibly valuable purpose is meaningful to us. We hope this work will leave you with a wider opened heart and remind us all the power of empathy. So please enjoy. One of the first things which everybody should understand is that every creature in the universe that is in any way sensitive and in any manner of speaking conscious regards itself as a human being. Uh, it knows and is aware of a hierarchy of beings above it and a hierarchy of beings below it. That is to say, that wherever you are, and whoever you are, and whatever you are, you're in the middle. That's the game. Your senses extend a certain direction, in all directions, and therefore give you the impression of being in the middle. Because the definition of a person is where you look from. Now, everything in the world feels like that. And also, it has its own kind, you see uh, spiders and uh, hydras and sea urchins and so on don't look very natural to us. We say, well, I wouldn't want to look like that. But they say when they see us, uh, well, what kind of an awful thing is that? And what a lot of nonsense it does. Now, we come here right at the start to an extremely important principle. which is the different points of view you get when you change your level of magnification. That is to say, you can look at something with a microscope and see it a certain way. You can look at it with a naked eye and see it in a certain way. You look at it with a telescope and you see it in another way. Now, which level of magnification is the correct one? Well, obviously, 
uh, they're all correct. They're just different points of view. When we examine our bloodstreams under a microscope, we see there's one hell of a fight going on. All sorts of microorganisms are chewing each other up. And if we got overly fascinated with our view of our own bloodstreams in the microscope, we should start taking sides, which would be fatal, because the health of our organism depends on the continuance of this battle. What is, in other words, conflict at one level of magnification is harmony at a higher level. Now, could it possibly be, therefore, that we, with all our problems, conflicts, neuroses, sicknesses, political outrages, wars, tortures, and everything that goes on in human life are a state of conflict which can be seen in a larger perspective as a, in a, as a situation of harmony. Every minute little fruit fly or gnat or bacterium, I will go so far as to say is an event upon which this whole cosmos depends. This thing goes both ways. It's not only that every little organism which exists depends on its total environment. The reverse is also true, that the total environment depends on each and every one of those little organisms. So that you could say, this universe consists of a, an arrangement of pattern in which every event is essential to the whole thing. Now, we screen that idea out of our consciousness just as we pay attention to the figure and ignore the background. So we see one way of looking at things, mainly that the organism is very frail against the environment. It lasts a long time, the environment, but the organism only lasts a short time. But actually, uh, the whole thing is arranged in a, a polar system where the enormous depends on the tiny and the tiny depends on the enormous. When you came into this world, there gradually arose into being the sensation of I. And it stays there a while, it goes through a development, and then it drops off. But all the time, everywhere, there are other eyes starting up. See? whether they be human, animal, anything you like. They be in other galaxies, etc. Always, they're starting up. Now, you would say there is no connection between them. No, in the same way, there is no connection between the molecules in your hand. And yet you say it is a hand. But if you look at it under a powerful enough microscope, the molecules in your hand are miles apart. What's the connection between this galaxy and other galaxies? Well, we can't see any connection. And yet there are gravitational uh, swings whereby they respond to each other and move in a certain collective order. See, what we're doing in this I'm not is not setting down a doctrine, but it is doing an exercise in perception. You can see it either way. You can see yourself, in other words, as existing only now that's the only you there is. The alternative to that, logically, is to see yourself as everything. And so in all this, you see, when you get a game going of this kind, uh, there comes the point of what you might call emotional investment. When you feel that the outcome of this particular feature in the game is urgent. See, this matters. And it's up to you what you think matters. We teach our children what matters, what's important for them to learn. And we teach them basically that it's important to live. And in a way, every being in this world is torn between going on and goofing off. We feel that's, a, that's the basis of our distinction between work and play. Play is everybody needs some time to goof off. But they must go back to work because you've got to farm and fish and manufacture and produce so that you can go on. 
But when you see you have this terrifying urgency to go on and feel you must, this is, this is important, this matters, we screen out of our consciousness the fact that this is our own volition and our own game. And the difficulty is that as we become disturbed and anxious about this, it's more difficult to keep the game going. In proportion, as we are frightfully concerned to survive, we start fighting other people. We start clobbering our neighbors and whatever it is, there's all the old fights start. And it is these fights which more than anything else, at the moment, you see, are endangering the entire human project but all based fundamentally on the illusion that it's utterly important that we survive. But you see, in all this, what underlies is the illusion that I am going on, that I constitute a real continuity from this moment to the next moment to the next moment next moment. What are you afraid of losing when you die? Yes, uh, everything that you've acquired as an individual and stored in your brain is dissolved and distributed. But at the same time, it is equally obvious that when you die, there won't be following the moment of death everlasting nothingness. So, you can become aware of this tremendous interconnectedness of everything. Just as fronts go with backs and tops with bottoms, insides with outsides, solids with spaces, so everything that there is goes together. And it makes no difference whether it lasts a long time or whether it lasts a short time. A galaxy goes together with all the universe just as much as a mosquito. You can get a certain vision of life where everything is seen to be a complex pattern of rhythm. Dances, the human dance, the flower dance, the bee dance, the giraffe dance. And that's what this all is, it's jazz, you see? This is a big jazz, this world. And what it's trying to do is to see how jazzed up it can get. How far out this play of rhythm can go. <laughs>